Okay, I got a question for you guys. Good, Brand is here too. Um, about what you want to do. Because you guys, Catherine, how long have you been doing this for him? Two years. Huh? Two years. Two years. Rand, you've been doing this for for a lot of years, yeah? Yeah, started in 2017, so that's already yeah, almost so, seven years. So quite a while. Quite a while. And Kevin, too. Yes. So you guys are not ranked beginners. Um, but I get the feeling, and maybe maybe I'm wrong, so you tell me. I get the feeling that trying to do the um, yin and yang cycles is maybe not what you want to do right now. Tell me what you think, and just please be blunt about it, because there's other things we can do. Catherine, what do you think? Um, personally, it's very useful for me. So. Yeah. I definitely, I think, need that. But I think that for Kevin and Rand, it's definitely maybe a little, I mean, I don't know. Let's not just talk to, to them, please. Rand, give, Rand, give us your opinion. I think it's fine. I don't think I'm uh, too old for it. But um, yeah, I, I kind of like to just uh, trust you with that. Uh, okay. Kevin, what do you think? Well, I mean, Rand and I went through the the uh, in the move the applications and the yin yang cycles up through half the form. Yeah. And, uh, it, this is a level of depth that you know you don't get elsewhere, and and you know how it is. You got to repeat it seven million times before it sinks in. Yeah. And I'm happy to do it. I mean, I when I first started, I wanted to learn all the forms, and then you know, and then I realized that's stupid. Because if you don't have the first one down to the level of where you need to be, none of the other stuff makes sense. And it's if you do get it, it's easier yeah. to pick up the other stuff. Yeah, exactly. If you if you take this first form and you work it and work it and work it all the way to the bottom, then you could go on to other forms. It's easy. The problem is most people have a little trouble with that kind of depth. Well, no. No, I'm not saying you guys do. I'm just saying, I'm saying most people do. So for instance, I'm in Master Zhang's class, the way he structured the class is you, you, you started with the 24 and you did it with Cat Kroll teaching. And it was very slow. It would take you about six months to go through the form. And that was his way of getting rid of people who uh, didn't have a lot of patience. Because you cannot learn Tai Chi without patience. You just have to have patience. Right? It's, it's a great craft. And crafting something takes... Um, some certain qualities, some qualities you have to bring into the workshop. And the number one quality you have to bring in is patience. Because if you don't have it, you'll never, you'll never go in depth. But at the same time, Americans in particular, but the Chinese are like this now too, because they've modernized. We get impatient. And we always want to be moving along. So like, like Kevin just said, at first people are enthusiastic. Oh, I want to do Tai Chi. I want to learn all these forms. And if they're not learning that, they feel like they're not moving ahead. They, no, don't, no. they don't actually recognize that going in depth is going ahead. So they have to, I need more, I need some of this and some of this and some of this and some of this, all these different forms. So they want to learn a whole bunch of forms and they learn them all badly. But the truth is, if you want to keep the students in there for a lot of, a lot of situations, you have to, to do some of that. The problem with our online classes is we can't do all those forms 
we try we did the 83 but to tell you the truth it wasn't very satisfactory the 83 is a big form it's it's big in numbers but it's also big in the space that it takes up and the attitude you have to have it doesn't work that well in um in video format um you're talking about things like sword and saber. You, you, you simply can't do it on, on a video format because you'd be, you'd be how, would, how would Rand do sword in his laundry room? <laughs> it, it won't work. You've got to have some real space. I have my sword here, but I, it's true that I'm not, I'm not using it. <laughs> and even, even my space here, is would be barely big enough to do sword and i would still be having to adjust my footwork all the time because the sword form is bigger than this space and sabers even bigger than that so that means that in a lot of ways we can't branch out into all these other forms to keep people amused and that means Okay, well, we can't do that. So that's, you can look at that as a negative. What's, what's the positive side of that? The positive side is what we can do are the two 24 forms. The 24 form we're working on now, and the other 24 form that I don't think you guys have seen yet. Um, you can do those in these space. It's reasonable, and it's it's of a the forms are of a reasonable length. They're not eighty three or seventy seven moves long. They're just twenty four moves long, and even that's enough to try and to try and teach uh, this way. And that leaves you with going in depth. But as Kevin just said, most classes in the United States never go in depth and there's a reason for it most people aren't up for it they just aren't we are not american run and i he's israeli <laughs> and french so <laughs> yes kevin so <clears throat> the, the thing that if you do this long enough and I'm not, I'm doing it poorly and I'm having a difficult time with it, but that's a different story. But putting together the meditation, the Qigong, the silk reeling and the form together to actually learn how to move your chi around, feel your organs, you know, all that kind of stuff that you're supposed to be doing. That's all, that's really hard to do. And that is where I think if we can do more of the integration of, you know, the yin yang cycles is this, where you're, chi how what it feels like to move a chi to the end of your fingers or to your you know this or where it is that would be really helpful because you're not going to learn this stuff just doing form no you have to, you have to have all of it and even in master zhang's class where our classes were three hours long saturday and sunday morning for three hours and that actually used used to turn into four or five hours all the time now John didn't stay all the time, but we stayed. And then Wednesday night uh, for three hours too. And originally when I started, it was Monday, Wednesday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday morning. So it was uh, 15 hours a week of classes. And even then we couldn't do everything. We did very little meditation. He would teach us meditation. He would suggest that we do it. But we did very, very little in class because there's just not time. It's not a meditation class. It's, a, it's, a, it's something else. And yet, every Tai Chi teacher will tell you, you need to do the meditation. If you want to get this, you've got to do the meditation. I, I, I like the direction we're going. I like doing this stuff in depth. But I don't want to bore you guys. I don't. I don't want also to uh, burden you with a level of detail that you're not interested in. I'm, I'm not bored. That you're okay with it. All right. All right. So what I was thinking last night is we we just started playing with uh, the yin and yang cycles again, 
And as Kevin says, this is not something you're going to get one time through. You're going to have to go through the yin and yang cycles four or five times before they start kind of coming home. What I'm trying to do as a teacher is figure out how to get this across to you when we're not in the same room. If we were in the same studio, I would have you come up and put your hands on my body so that you can feel this. That is called direct transference. And it's what my teacher used to do all the time. You, you, and, and then he would do the application on you. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't try to crush you, but he would do a very light version of it so that you had a feeling for what it was. And it was only when you start to feel, feel, feel this, and it's like he doesn't do it to you one time and you get it. He's going to have to do it to you a couple of dozen times over a six-month period before you start, something starts to happen inside. It's just the way it works. We can't do that. So what can we do? And what I was thinking last night, I don't know if this is a solution, but what I was thinking last night is, okay, we're talking about the yin and yang cycles, which is the basic underlying structure of what's going on. But there's also the question, yeah, the structure is good. Structure is really important. Uh, and we can go into more detail with this. But there's also dynamics. And without the dynamics, the, the structure is just static. So this is actually a very dynamic kind of structure. And I think we need to, to do a little more work on that. I don't, I don't know how exactly to do that. Uh, maybe I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, falling back on my tape to try and bring this into your body. But why don't we try something today? Let's, let's go back and work on, on the movement of six ceiling and four closing. And we'll do it really, really slowly. And, and go into yin, each yin and yang cycle and try to understand what the hell you're doing with your body. Not sure, your mind leads, your chi will follow, your physical body supports and expresses all that, um, but you still have to understand what your physical body is supposed to be doing uh, so that you do it correctly. So it, it's, it's kind of like, um, I don't know if, you, if any of you guys have ever played golf. Have you ever done golf? Well, all right, you can, you can imagine. So, someone who is um, golfing. No, this is too long. You, you have to develop a golf swing. All right. All right, it's very simple. That's a golf swing. The truth is people work on their golf swing for decades to try and get a decent golf swing. And they hire professional coaches to coach them through because it's very hard to see what you're actually doing versus what you should be doing. That's why if we were in the same room, I can demonstrate a move for you. You can, you can understand it intellectually, but that doesn't mean you can do it. All right? So you have to get coached into, into what the right swing is, what the right movements are, what muscles are doing what, how you use your mind, where your chi goes. Every, every athlete, every professional athlete has coaches. They pay a, lot, pay a lot of money for those coaches, right? And sometimes the coaches are old fat guys like me, right? Because they know how to do it. 
they're not they're not young and strong and still in the tournaments but they do understand how to do it so you pay them a lot of money to tell you how to do it so let's take let's take a move like this so simple Wind up, push. It's very simple, but if you don't you if you don't structure your body correctly, if you don't have the bones in the right places, you it won't work. If you don't use the right muscles in the right sequence, it won't work. It won't have any power. If you don't have the structure right, it'll just fall apart. If you don't have the muscles right, there won't be any power in it. Hold on a minute. I'm going Tron. I mean, I've enjoyed not my bad knee, but the fact that I'm able to just watch you. And it, you know, it, it's every your, your your ankles, your knees, your quad, your everything has got an order to movement, and you don't see it while you're doing it. You have to, you know, study you. <laughs> Yeah, no, Kevin, I know, I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, when I uh, was working with Master Zhang, I would absolutely glue my eyes on Master Zhang, and I would watch his belly, not his hands, not his feet, not his face, his belly, because that's where everything was coming from. And I, you would look around at the other students, not all the students, but say 80%, 90% of the students, you'd look around while Master Zhang was demonstrating something and they'd be like this. Oh, look, there's a bird, you know? They, look, pay attention to your teacher. That's what you're here for. And it, the only way you can figure this out is to figure it out. You've got to figure it out yourself. I mean, the, the teacher can demonstrate and do this and, and do that, but I got to tell you, you've got to be like a detective. You've got to be like a detective and, and watch him or her. Sure, listen to what they're saying, but the real teacher is their body. You've got to watch it, figure out what they're doing, and then figure out how to do it yourself. And that's not easy. It takes a lot of patience. You know, since you talked about Annie and focusing on the bottom of her feet. I've been, I've been doing that. And it's yeah. interesting how it, I'm now feeling that feeling of being grounded. You're feeling what, Kevin? The feeling of being grounded. Yeah. I mean, before you, you can, you, you can tell when you're, you just feel like you're a little bit high up. And then when you get to the stance and, and the feet, right, all of a sudden you're, you're, you're stuck to the earth you know yes, exactly and it, it's it's interesting i can't keep that feeling and and this is what i've been looking for for you know 15 16 years or whatever it is and you and uh yeah, it's very interesting my my own take on it is that um grounding comes from centering 
If you truly center yourself, you will be grounded. To the extent that you are not really centered, you will feel ungrounded. They're actually uh, two sides to the same coin. That's my take on it. I don't know. This is fun, but I, I don't know whether this is really going to get the point across. It doesn't matter whether you're going this way or whether you're going this way or whether you're going this way. It's all the same thing. It's not the hands. It's your, your screwing down into the ground. Like, like you've got a corkscrew and you're, you're, you're going to drive it into the cork in a, in a bottle of wine. You're going to drive that corkscrew into the ground. And then it's going to come back up out of the ground. So it's dynamic in both directions. All right. It screws into the ground. And then it comes back up out of the ground. It screws into the ground. <laughs> It's exactly like my old buddy here. Right? It screws into the ground and then snap. Right? You, you have to wind up before you come back. All right, let's let's try some things. How do you how do you structure your your bones? So let's let's uh, do this really, really simply. Feet equilateral. Right? Put your weight on the left foot. As soon as you move your weight from 50-50 to the left, watch what happens with my daimai. This. I'm not even, I'm not even doing that on purpose. It's starting to spiral. This qua, the left qua, is going to close. I'm not even closing it on purpose. Just watch. Yeah, it's closing. Right? It's closing. That's the beginning of the spiral. Spiral down to the knee, and then down to the ground. Annie, uh, you know, Annie's got one of these, um, I forget what it's called, but it's a, it's a little trampoline. It's about, it's about this big. She's got it in the bedroom in front of the windows, and she gets on that trampoline, and she, she basically does, you know, marching, walking like this. She does about three to four miles a day. And she, she does different things on there. One of the things she does is this. Try it. Try, I want you to do that right now and pay attention 
to your legs, especially the, the upper part between the knee and the hip. Do it, do it enough, it starts to take a little effort. All right. When you are lifting your leg, which muscles are you using? When you are putting your leg down, which muscles are you using? They're not the same muscles. In Tai Chi, we divide things up into yin and yang. Okay, the, 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 the red and blue I have on here are, are, are just meant to differentiate left from right. They don't mean anything about yin and yang. The tape I'm going to put on now does mean something about yin and yang, okay? This red is yang. This blue is yin. All right, when I lift my leg, when I put my leg down, I'm using either yin or yang. When I lift my leg, which of your muscle groups do you feel that in? Now, of course, you feel it a little bit in all muscle groups, but where, where's the focus? Kevin? On the yin, the blue. It's on the blue. When you put the leg down, which one is it on? Kevin? Red, yang. It's on the red. This is closing. It's bringing energy into the body. Just like if you were to do this, that's closing. It's bringing energy in. When you bring your leg, we say you're bringing your leg up, but you look at it, what you're really doing is bringing your leg in. That's a yin function. That's an absorbing function. When you, when you push out, that's yang. When you push out, that's yang. So, when you are winding up, you're closing. You notice when you do that, that the, that the blue line becomes more visible. All right? Now watch the red line here, All right? Now I'm closed. I'm, I'm activating this, this set of muscles. Oh, now the red line is obvious. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's what you got to do, right? <laughs> you, when you wind up, you're going to activate it's the same as closing. You're going to activate the yin lines in the body. All right? In fact, I'm going to take this one off.
Okay, why did I just change this, Kevin? You're going to show the opening and closing in the... Yes, but why did I change it from white to blue? This is a yin line. Oh, yeah, that's where I was going. I'm trying... Okay, this is, the, this is the yin side of the body. If I wanted to do the yang side, I'd have to put a red, a red stripe up and down my back. Watch, watch these two lines. Imagine you're watching the red line up and down my back. It's very simple. Suppose, I, I don't even know how you do this wrong. All right, so I'm, I'm going to adjust my foot. Watch this foot adjustment. This is the wrong thing to do. Bad structure. If, if you don't have room to step out like this, don't do that. Because the guy's going to clobber you. All right? Just don't do it. If you don't have room, then work on your efficiency. Now you can still do it, even though you can't go down, but don't ruin your own structure. All right, what is, what is the structure? What is the structure you've got when you do this? What is this structure? It's a horse stance. What is a horse stance? It's a catenary arch. It's a natural arch, not a geometric arch, a natural arch. If we, if we hung a chain from the ceiling and just let it hang naturally and then turn it upside down, that's what your legs are. That structure is very strong. You can even, right, you can compress it and it won't break, and it will bounce back. That's the structure. So how do you get that structure? Well, you practice a horse dance. Everything you do in Tai Chi and Qigong, you do it in a horse dance. Catherine's doing a good one right now. Do it again. Yes, right. you can even do, uh, she's at a, a, just a slight horse stance here. You can even do it very high, but, but you still maintain that same arch. It's not this, watch, it's not this. Why do people stand like that? They stand like that because they get tired and by locking their hips and lower back, they just lock their knees, lock their hips, lock their lower back. It gives you a kind of false strength. It's not flexible. It's not good for you. You shouldn't do it, right? Instead, you should develop bodies, flexible body strength by flexing your hips, flexing your knees, flexing your lower back. Huh? And then you just, it's very comfortable. You just stay in that stance, no matter what you do. So you practice that stance all the time. You can't you can't just ignore it 90% of the time and then come into a Tai Chi class and, and try to remember it. You're not gonna. You have to practice it all the time. So after you've practiced it all the time for about two years, you will just do it without even thinking about it. Now you're gonna have the right structure. You've got the right structure. 
The knees are flexible, the hips are flexible, the lower back is flexible, everything's flexible. So if you want to um, wind up in one direction, it's easy. Easy. And then you just come back up out of that. It's so natural. Now, there's other things on top of that. Watch, watch the Dan Chen as the center of the Dai Mai. Watch. It's not, it doesn't look like a huge movement. Uh, it's, it's moving what? Six or eight inches in one direction and then six or eight inches back, right? It's not like it's moving 10 feet or something. It's just a few inches. Watch my hand. What, six or eight inches? In, in, in essence, in essence, what you're learning in Tai Chi is to use your body like a whip. It can be very whip-like. Right. Whip. But it's it's all based on this. Every one of those is just like me using my towel and whipping. It's just whipping. Yeah, Kevin. So what I try to do, or have been trying to do, is not use my arms. So I I try to get the inertia going by body alignment and rotating. And then the arms will start going out. And then when you get that whipping, you can then refine the form of it. Yes. But exactly. if you don't do that, you just concentrate on flapping your arms around and it doesn't do, do you any good. If you're focusing, like we talked about last week, if you focus on the periphery, it won't work. You have to focus on the core moving out to the periphery. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do that, I, I don't do it like this. Was this, this just still? I'm not shifting my weight, right? Instead, you shift your weight. You turn your waist, right? This is creating the wave. There's, there's a, the sequence is called the chi path. You always use the chi path, and it's always, almost always, the same path. All right? We've talked about this before, so here's the second time. It starts here. It goes to here. Then, in this case, it's going to go to the bottom of that foot. Then it's going to come back to here. Then it's going to go to here, and then the shoulder the elbow, the wrist, and the fingertips. Watch me draw it in the air. Now, if you get comfortable with that, most of that chi path can remain invisible. It can stay internal. 
So you don't you don't see tai, tai Chi players that are sparring, you don't see them do this. I'm gonna poke this guy, I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna come up and poke him. No, that's not how it happens, all right? But inside, you're, that's what you're doing. So it may be something more like this. <laughs> The, but that path happened, all right? Down to the foot, out to the fingertips. Down, down to the foot, out to the fingertips. Um, something that I, I want to do in the uh, advanced uh, Qigong class, maybe we'll even start it on Tuesday, is practice silk reeling. Silk reeling is, the, the, the nickname for it is spiral power exercises. Where's the spiral? Right here. Boom. What's the power? It's learning to use it and to use it efficiently. And an exercise in spiral power might look like this. And people think the point is to be spiraling your wrist. No, that's not the point. That's, that's the outcome. The point is to practice that big internal spiral and then let it manifest itself in the wrist and the fingertips. So watch. From my mind to the bottom of my foot, back up and out to the end of my fingers. In other words, it's following the chi path. Now, once you get comfortable with that chi path, right, then it, it almost becomes invisible because it's now just much more efficient. Some people think, oh, oh, well, it must be the daimai. The daimai is doing that. Yeah, the daimai is involved, but the daimai is just one step. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's and, and that's arbitrary. And the truth is, it's every cell in between. Suppose you're doing elbows. Same thing. So suppose you're doing the whole arm. Same thing. It's exactly the same thing. The only thing that's different is how it's, where you are pushing that out into the world. Maybe you're pushing it out through the tips of the fingers. Maybe you're pushing it out through the elbow. Maybe you're using your whole arm, right? But the internal spiral is always the same. So what you're really practicing is the internal, the creation of the internal power spiral and then letting it manifest at different places around the perimeter, around the, the edge, so to speak, all right? Maybe it's the foot. Doesn't matter. It still goes down here and then comes and then comes out the foot. All right. It's not like it doesn't it doesn't go from here to my foot. Because that just leaves all the insides out. All right? It goes down to the base of that foot and then out out the other side. Down, up, and out. All right. Uh, so maybe on uh, Tuesday, uh, we'll pick this up a little bit. This was a good introduction. Does this make sense to you guys? Once you get this idea, pick a couple of things to practice. 
don't try to do the whole form at once. It's too much. All right. Uh, it's like listen to. Um, in fact, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, get him. Um, um, Itzhak Perlman uh, does uh, a lot of teaching, little little short teaching videos online, and he talks about how to practice the violin. And what he says is, you don't practice the whole concerto. You practice one bar maybe two bars and you just practice it over and over and over and over until it's in your body and then you go on to the next bar so you can you can do the whole concerto uh, during your practice sometime maybe the end of your practice but the but the the core of the practice are little small snippets so this move here Here, I've got a question for you. The more you contract, the more you can expand. So suppose I contracted this much. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? If you're sparring or just pushing hands. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? So when you go all the way down, you're at your maximum contraction? Yeah. It's a bad idea. Why is that? Because you got nowhere else to go. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's a big part of it. <laughs> You've got nowhere else to go, and all somebody has to do is put their hands on your shoulders, on your back. You're down like this, and they're just going to crush you. So you have to maintain flexibility, which means you can't go 100%. Maybe you can go 40%, something like that. If you're very young and strong, you can do much more than that. But as you get a little older, you, you have to do less. All right, if you're doing less, well, how do you get any power then? Come on, Kevin, how do you get the power? Speed. Speed helps. Efficiency. You have to be very efficient. Most steam engines, most steam engines that the entire industrial revolution ran on were only 1% efficient. What has happened from those early days when they were first invented to today is slowly we have figured out how to make these engines more efficient. Yes, now we, we run on gasoline rather than coal, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just a liquefied form. All right? what, what makes modern uh, cars and the use of fossil fuels better than it used to be is the engines are more efficient. Now they can get something like 32% on some of them anyway. But they will never they will never get much higher than that. That's kind of the theoretical limit of stuff. So, right, when you go down, you don't have to go all the way to the floor. Just maybe go down a third of the way. and then come back up and you can feel it if you follow this path this chi path you can feel right, the energy condensing and now it's expanding and you should feel it in your hands just like when you flick a towel when you flick a towel at somebody what you're going to hit them with is this little tiny end. If you do it right, you can take about a square inch of skin off someone, right? So 
you're just you're just hitting him with a tiny little end. But all the power, all the power is behind that. It's the same with this. All this big body, you're just hitting him with your little fingers. Boom. But that can be very powerful. Okay, guys, I'm sorry I kept you over, but um, we'll pick it up next time. Maybe in the advanced class on Tuesday. Yeah, Kevin. So <clears throat> I was reading a story about a locomotive steam engine, and it's in business now. So it go, it's a tour. You can get on it. It goes seven miles up a hill, seven miles down. Right. The guy that's shoveling the coal, 1,800 pounds of coal has to go in that boiler to get it up the hill. Yeah. How about down the hill? About 600. About 600. Wow. Big difference. So <laughs> the, the, the human body can be made much more efficient than it usually is. But just like with having to invent that much more efficient technology took a couple of centuries, it takes a few years to work on this and, and develop the efficiency in your body. Tai Chi's not going to give you anything you don't already have. You've already got everything. All you have to do is learn how to use it. Okay, guys, see you next time. Ciao.